Hey, shalom to all my fellow brothers and sisters out there. It's me again, Damian Powell from YeshuaSavesAll.com. Peace be to you in the name of our Father, Yahweh, and our Adon, which means Master in Hebrew, the Son of Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach. So my fellow brothers and sisters, as you see, the title is Message to Christians Celebrating Satanic Holidays. So... I pray this is for anybody who is celebrating satanic holidays. Um, and I pray that you share this with everybody who you know that is celebrating satanic holidays. Um, because the true, the true days that all believers ought to be celebrating are found in the Holy Scriptures or the Bible, as people refer to it as. Um, and those are the ones that are uh, listed in Leviticus chapter 23 and Deuteronomy 16 which I always talk about, Passover, Feast on Eleven Bread, Shavuot, which is a.k.a. Pentecost, um, Yom Teruah, which people know as Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, and the Last Great Day. Those are the, believe, the days that all believers should be celebrating to our Father Yahweh that found in Scripture. And one of the main things that I always talk about is that once you accept Yeshua HaMashiach as your Messiah and Savior and believe that He rose on the third day, and that our Father Yahweh, Yeshua, the true Elohim of Israel, then you have become grafted into the nation of Israel, <clears throat> just as a native born. So there's only one faith and one way to get there, and it's through his son, but also keeping the commandments. So I'll say that to say is that all of Yahweh's holy days start in the spring with Pesach, which is Passover. Okay, when things are coming to life, think about that. Things are coming to life in the spring. OK, you have the uh, the flowers are starting to bloom. The days are getting warmer. All right. So you can see it. But as of the 14th of this month, we've already celebrated the last of Yahweh's holy days, which was the eighth day closing assembly, which came right after the Feast of Tabernacles. All right. So it just goes to show you <clears throat> that Yah that life is built right into Yahweh's calendar. You can actually you can literally see life. OK, but. As Yahweh's days have ended, as his days have ended, most of the world is now getting ready to celebrate the wicked holidays of Satan that are not found in the Bible. And that's for a reason. OK, like I said, uh, Satan wants to mock everything. So he has to have some days. He has to have his days just like our father Yahweh has his days. And a lot of people don't know that our father Yahweh has Shabbats or Sabbaths. And Satan takes the the the, um, the H off and has Sabbat, S A B B A T S, and it literally means a pagan gathering of witches. So why would any believer or any Christian want to be involved in being in a pagan gathering of witches? Think about that. So all of um like I said, the world is now getting ready to celebrate Satan's holidays, which I want to make this video to warn everybody. Um, when things outside are getting cold, things like trees and plants are dying, okay? So this is symbolic of the nature of Satan. Now, let me make it clear. The seasons of Yahweh are perfect and good because he created them all. I'm just merely making a connection or the reference from the timing of the pagan holidays that Yahweh's comes in the spring when life is, is coming anew. And Satan's begins when things are dying. Okay, so it's just symbolic of the nature of him and the nature of Father Yahweh. Now, Father Yahweh created all the seasons, so they're all perfect and good, right? So, Halloween, for example, that the world will be celebrating soon, represents death. And we, we already know this, and any believer should know that it, uh, it represents death. Ghosts, demons, vampires, and then... When the veil between the, um, the living and the dead is at its thinnest on this day. So it says that it allows for demonic possession and spells to be casted upon people. So why would any believer be celebrating this? Okay. And no, you cannot disguise it. You can't disguise Halloween by calling it a fall harvest or a fall festival and then bring it into the church for children to celebrate. Okay. All you did was change the name. All you did was change the name from Halloween to another name to justify sitting at a table with demons. That's not what our Father Yahweh would want you to do. Okay. Now, a lot of people will say that they go to these satanic holidays 
um, with family only because it's the time that family can get together when, when everybody is off because the whole world is off. But that is no excuse. These are nothing but excuses and justification to indirectly observe, observe these pagan holidays. We are to have nothing to do with them. I don't care if the whole world is off and this is the only time that you have off to go and see family. You must choose another day. Okay, days are important. The same way we talk about the Sabbath day being on the seventh day, that is important. Okay, it's important. So th these days for Satan are, are days for him that he, he says are important. So you are going and observing an important day to him. You are to have nothing to do with it. Don't even accept food from a place like that. Like somebody said, I'm going to bring you back candy from a Halloween party. Don't you eat it. I'm going to bring back turkey from Thanksgiving. Don't you eat it. Don't, 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 those are slaughterings to those that are not Yahweh. Absolutely not. Okay. So like I said, we are not to be associated with these holidays on any level or in any fashion. You either follow Yeshua HaMashiach, the son of Yahweh, or nothing at all. There is no in-between. Don't be the church of Laodicea, a lukewarm believer. Galatians chapter 4, verse 8 through 10. Paul says, But then, indeed, not knowing Elohim, you serve those which by nature are not mighty ones. But now, after you have known Elohim, how do you turn back again to the weak and poor elementary matters to which you wanted to be enslaved again? You closely observe days and months and seasons and years. So look at this. Paul is saying that, that before you came into the truth, like we all have, we all walked in the darkness before he woke us up, okay? We were spiritually blinded. But Paul is saying that before you came into the truth, you ignorantly, ignorantly served these false deities, okay? Because you didn't know any better, okay? Now, now that you know Yeshua and claim to follow him, how can you go back to the pagan things that you left behind? How do you consistently go back to the pagan things that you left behind? You're supposed to be a renewed creature, a renewed mind, and to die to self and follow Yeshua HaMashiach, die to self, die to sin, and live for him and be obedient to his commandments and cling to him in faith. Okay, Revelation 12, 17, Satan only wants to wage war on those who keep the commandments of Yahweh and believe in his son Yeshua. So if you're going back in, to Satan's holidays, then what does, what does that say? What is that saying? Okay, now, however, these people, like I said, when they are celebrating these holidays, they are closely observing the pagan holidays, uh, months, seasons, and years, and anticipation for the next satanic holiday. Think about it. Xmas is the world's favorite time of the year. The people say, I can't wait for Xmas so that they can get their gifts, right? And they want, the, they want to put up the Xmas lights. They want to put up the Xmas tree. So they are closely observing days and seasons, anticipating for these pagan holidays. Now, I've already done a video, um, plenty of videos in the years past, um, exposing the demonic origin of all these pagan holidays. I won't be going over that today. So if you haven't, they're on, they're on here on the, on the channel and you can check them out. And I go into detail about them, but this, when I talk about Halloween, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Xmas, New Year's, uh, Valentine's Day, Mom's Day, Dad's Day, your birthday, St. Patrick's Day, E-A-S-T-E-R, just to name a few, okay? Also, reading your horoscopes and tarot card readings are straight from the devil as well. So if you open up the newspaper to read horoscopes, it's wrong. Stay away from it. Tarot card readings and all that, they're nothing but gateway for demons. So I'm not going to go into detail discussing about that today. But rather, I'm going to show you the evil that is being done right in the sight of our father, Yahweh, and his son, Yeshua HaMashiach. And you are literally grieving the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, when you celebrate these evil days. Okay. And it is just as evil in this sight today as it was in, um, in ancient Israel when um, our ancestors were backsliding by uh, worshiping pagan deities. So let's take a look at this. The warning that our father Yahweh gives us, Jeremiah, Yirmiyahu, chapter 10, verse 2 through 5. Thus saith Yahweh, 
Do not learn the way of the Gentiles. So that's the first thing right off the bat. Do not even learn the way of the Gentiles. The Gentile is a non-believer. So like I said, if there's a, a non if there's a, a person who was not born an Israelite naturally as a native and they're a Gentile, once they come into the belief, then you're no longer a Gentile. You're a fellow citizen of Israel. Okay, that's why you that's why there's no Jew, no Greek, no slave, no free, no male, no female, because we're all one. You can't tell the difference. But if you are still delving into paganism, then that is a Gentile, it's a non-believer. So Yahweh said, do not learn the way of the Gentiles. Some um, translations say the heathen, all right? And do not be frightened by the signs of the Shamaim, the heavens. For the Gentiles are frightened by them. For the customs of the Gentiles are vain. Okay, it is a tree cut out of the forest, the work of the carpenter for a molten image. They are beautified with silver and gold. They fix them with hammers and nails. They will set them up and they shall not be moved. It is fabricated silver and they will not walk. It is forged silver. They must certainly be carried for they cannot walk. So we already know that our father Yahweh is referring to an Xmas tree here that you deck with silver and gold, right? That most people are putting this idol into their homes every year on the 25th of, you know, that, that month, the birth of a demon. But like I said, notice how father Yahweh says, learn not the way of the Gentiles. Okay, yet those who claim to know Yeshua always self-assimilate. Self-assimilate means that they have, they want to always learn the way of the pagan nations around them. Like, for example, like Hellenism is learning of the Greek culture. Okay, so they always wanted to be like all the pagan nations around them. And they brought all the pagan customs into the worship of Yahweh. And you simply can't do that. We are a holy people. The word holy literally means set apart. So we are supposed to be separated from this entire world. We're not even supposed to look like them at all or even dress like them or talk like them. That's how serious this is. Leviticus, Yikra, chapter 19, verse 2. Speak, speak, to all, speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel and say to them, Be holy, for I, Yahweh, your Elohim, am holy. So our Father Yahweh calls us to be holy just as he is. Now, how are you being holy when you're bringing in satanic holidays right in with it? You cannot. Deuteronomy, Davarim, chapter 12, verse 30. Guard yourself that you are not ensnared to follow them after they are destroyed from before you and that you do not inquire about their mighty ones, saying, how did these nations serve their mighty ones? And let me do so too. So he already warned you. So Yahweh says, do not even inquire, which means to ask, investigate, look into how these pagan nations serve their pagan deities and thinking that you can bring their abominable worship practices in to worship him. You can't do it. However, a majority of the world has learned the way of the heathen and attempts to worship Yahweh in the same manner as the pagans worship their demons. But Yahweh strictly forbids this. Instead of repenting, they justify their evil by saying, oh, I'm doing this for Yeshua. Or how can something be? Yeah, they, people just say they do it for Yeshua. And I'm going to touch on the heart later on in this broadcast about how people say, oh, but he knows my heart. We're going to talk about that. Okay. But how can something be for Yeshua when it's something that he already hates and something that he called abominable? Okay. That's the main thing is that. You can't, you can't observe something that he never commanded. You simply cannot Christianize something that is evil. No matter how hard you try, you can't Christianize a demon. Okay, so with that said, let's look at scripture to look at some examples of how Christian today, Christians today want to make something evil, um, an evil celebration for Yahweh. Okay, take an evil celebration and then you say it's for Yahweh. Let's look at an example. Exodus, Shemot, chapter 32, verse 1 through 6. Now listen closely. And when the people saw that Moses was long in coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Arise, make us mighty ones who go before us. 
For this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, Take off the golden earrings which are, in our, which are in your ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. And all the people took off their golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he took them from their hand, and he formed it with an engraving tool. And he made a molded calf. And then he said, This is your mighty one, O Yisrael, that brought you up out of the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt. And Aaron saw and built an altar before it. And Aaron called out and said, Tomorrow is a festival to Yahweh. And they rose up early on the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Now, did you catch that? So just like Aaron made a golden calf for the people to worship, and then he turned around and said, tomorrow is a festival to Yahweh with the golden calf as the object of worship. The same way Christians today are putting Satan as the object of worship and then turning around and saying that they're doing it for Yahweh or Yeshua and saying, oh, tomorrow is a festival to Yahweh. See, I celebrate Xmas because it's the birth of, of, of Yeshua. False. You're doing the same thing that Aaron did here. Okay. It is not a festival of Yahweh. And then as we see that um, they rose up to play just as they did during Aaron's day. They rose up to play as if this is some game. That's what scripture just said. It says after they slaughtered and brought for burnt offerings to the golden calf, they rose up to play. This is not a game. And that's what Christians are doing. Or any believer. I don't care who it is out there in this world that's doing it. It's wrong. You, you rise up to play after sacrificing to your pagan deity or worshiping your pagan deity. And then you go and open up your Xmas gifts, which is a birth of a demon. Then you eat your Halloween candy. candy. You celebrate E-E-A-S-T-E-R -E 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 instead of Passover and not even give it a second thought of the evil that you just committed, just as they did. This is a complete abomination to Yahweh. And what, what is Yahweh's response for how when Aaron... And the Israelites did, since they sacrificed to a golden calf and said tomorrow is a festival of Yahweh. And Yahweh was never in that celebration because he detested. What was Yahweh's response? Exodus chapter 32, verse 7 through 9. And Yahweh said to Moses, go, get down for your people whom you brought out of the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt, have corrupted themselves. So first of all, look at that word. So that applies to any believer today who celebrated pagan holidays, you have corrupted yourselves. Okay, they have turned aside quickly out of the way which I have commanded them. And they have made themselves a, a molded calf and have bowed themselves to it and slaughtered to it and said, This is your mighty one, O Yisrael, who brought you up out of the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt. And Yahweh said to Moses, I have seen this people, and it is a stiff necked people and now let me alone that my wrath might burn against them and i consume them and make make of you a great nation that's very deep and the same thing is occurring today most of the world is bowing down in the spiritual realm to satan and many other pagan deities by celebrating these demonic holidays and we see that our father yahweh wanted to destroy them for their wicked deeds and call them stiff-necked Examine yourself today and ask yourself, are you being stiff-necked? Stiff Have you corrupted yourselves? Have you turned away from the commands of our Father Yahweh? Ask yourself that. Do you think a stiff-necked believer can enter into the kingdom of Yahweh? Ask yourself that. We see those stiff-necked Israelites were about to be destroyed because of, it, because of it. What makes anything different today? What makes anything different today? That's the reason why he sent his son to bear the wrath of our sins so that we don't have to bear the wrath of our own sins on judgment day. But if you don't repent, you keep on celebrating these, these pagan holidays and breaking his commandments, then it's not a, it's not a good, uh, the ending is not good, period. Yahweh's intolerance for sin did not change, has not changed, and will not change. He hates sin and we know that the wages of sin is death. 
Don't trample on the blood of Yeshua's sacrifice to honor a demon. Okay, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 through 31. For if we sin purposely after, after have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains slaughter offering for sins, but some fearsome anticipation of judgment and a fierce fire which is about to consume the opponents. Anyone who has disregarded the Torah of Moses dies without compassion on the witness of two or three witnesses. How much more punishment do you think he shall deserve who has trampled the son of Yahweh underfoot? Counted the blood of the covenant by which he has sanctified as common and insulted the spirit of favor. For we know him who has said, vengeance is mine. I shall repay, says Yahweh. And again, Yahweh said, shall judge his people. It is a fearsome thing to fall into the hands of the living Elohim. Think about that. Now, let's talk about how you cannot Christianize a demon. No matter how hard you try to put, as they say, Christ back into Xmas. It is a waste of time because he was never in it to begin with. Yeshua was never born on this day. And all of the pagan demonic holidays teach the world and children how to be selfish and not selfless. On Xmas, you get gifts. You get gifts on Xmas. On your birthday, you get free gifts and treated as some king or queen. And then on Halloween, you get free candy. On Valentine's Day, you get fornication and candy on top of it, right? So let us look at more scriptures to show you how you cannot Christianize a pagan holiday and say that you're doing it for our father Yahweh and his son Yeshua. Yahweh is a jealous ale, okay? And that's a singular form for G-O-D. And so if you are putting a demon before him, do you think he will approve of this? Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 16 through 17. They moved him to jealousy with the foreign. With abominations, they provoked him. They slaughtered to demons and not to Elohim. Mighty ones they did not know. New ones who came lately, which your ancestors did not reverence. Enoch, Hanak, chapter 19, verse 1. And Uriel said to me, Here shall stand the messengers, or the Malachim, or the angels in English, who have connected themselves with women and their spirits assuming many different forms are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrifice into demons as mighty ones to the day of the great judgment in which they shall be rightly ruled till they are made an end of sacrifice into demons. So people are indirectly doing that today. Jubilees chapter 22, verse 16 through 22. And you, my son, Yaakov, Jacob, remember my words and observe the commandments of Abraham, Abraham, your dad. Separate yourself from the nations. Separate yourself from the nations and do not eat with them and do not do according to their works. And do not become their associate, for their works are unclean, and all of the ways are defiled, an abomination and uncleanness. They offer their offerings to the dead. Think about Halloween, ghosts, demons, spirits, vampires, right? They offer their offerings to the dead. They worship evil spirits, all of the pagan holidays. And they eat over the graves. They are fascinated with death. And all of the works are worthless in emptiness. Verse 22. And as for all the worshipers of the idols and profane, there shall be no hope for them in the land of the living. And there shall be no remembrance of them on the earth, for they shall descend into the grave and, and into the place of condemnation they shall go. As the children of Saddam were taken away from the earth, so shall all those who worship idols be taken away. So shall all of those who worship idols be taken away. So as you can see, this is serious. Psalms, Tehillim, chapter 106, verse 20 through 21. Yahweh says, thus they change my esteem into the form of an ox that eats grass. 
they forgot El, their savior, the doer of greatness in Egypt, Mitzrayim. So that's right. The same way that they changed Yahweh's esteem into a golden calf that eats grass is the same way that Christianity has changed Yahweh's esteem into Santa Claus and, um, and bunny eggs and want to change them into pumpkins and Xmas trees and all these other things. Judges chapter 3, verse 7. The children of Israel did evil in the eyes of Yahweh and forgot Yahweh their Elohim and served the B-A-A-L-S and A-S-H-E-R-A-S-H-S. Those are pagan deities. That's why, you know, I'm not pronouncing their names. They're pagan deities found all throughout scripture. And our father Yahweh always said, break down the altars of B-A-A-L and cut down the the uh, A-S-H-E-R-A-H, the trees that were around, right? He said, cut them down because they're false pagan deities that the world is pagan, paying homage to on all of these pagan holidays. And we see that this act is evil in the sight of Yahweh, okay? This happened literally after Joshua died and the elders who, were with, who outlived Joshua, they saw Yahweh in his works, but the generation after them grew, grew up they didn't know Yahweh and they turned to pagan worship. And it's continuing on to this day. As we can see, worshiping these idols and these false deities on these pagan days does not bode well at all. Scripture makes a clear distinction between what is required to worship Yahweh in spirit and truth. And we already know that there's keeping his commandments and clinging to his son Yeshua in faith. Whether people know it or not, they are directly or indirectly bowing down to these unclean spirits by celebrating these demonic holidays. Think about this and think about your children and repent and turn away from Satan and turn to our Father Yahweh. You have time to repent. Each day you wake up, you have a chance to get it right if you didn't know better. So the question is, will you obey or will you be stiff-necked? Let's look at stubbornness because... A lot of people have hard hearts and they choose to be stubborn, right? So some people know what the scriptures say about not celebrating these pagan holidays. And some people refuse and will continue to celebrate them anyway. But what does scripture have to say about this? Judges chapter 2 verse 19. And it came to be when the ruler was dead that they would turn back and do more corruptly than their ancestors to go after other mighty ones to serve them and bow down to them. They did not refrain from their practices and from their stubborn way. Stubborn. Our Elohim has been patient with this world. And he, just as he was with the Israelites, he spared them many times. And Moshe said, spare them. Mo Moses said, spare them, Father Yahweh. Don't, don't destroy them. And he would spare some of them. And every time he delivered them, they would go back and do more evil and would not refrain from pagan worship. And that same thing is going on today. He is, a, he is sparing you. Most of this world refuses to obey and want to continue to walk in their stubborn ways. Okay, now how does the Bible define stubbornness? 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. 1 Samuel 15, 23. For rebellion is as the sin of divination and stubbornness is as wickedness and idolatry because you have rejected the word of Yahweh. He also rejects you as king. So look at that rebellion and stubbornness against his commandments is equivalent to playing with a Ouija board to casting out spells and creating graven images and serving them. That's how he looks at being disobedient to his word. Like I said, we don't ever have to, make up our own definition of what stubbornness is or any definition in the Bible. Yahweh gives us clear definition in scripture. So think about that, that, think about that the next time you're being stubborn or being rebellious to his word. Think about what he equates that to. But people will say this. People say, well, Yeshua knows my heart, so I can celebrate these things. He knows in my heart why I'm doing these things. Is this true? Is this true about the heart? Again, what does scripture have to say about it and not our own opinion? Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is crooked above all and desperately sick. Who shall know it? 
Look at that definition. Okay, the heart is crooked above all, desperately sick. Who shall know it? So you're saying that you're going to follow your heart when it's, when it's crooked above all and desperately sick and who can know it? You can't trust your heart. Okay, Jubilees, that's why we need the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. We don't trust our heart. We trust him who leads us. Jubilees, chapter 12, verse 5. This is Abraham speaking to his dad, Tira. Why do you worship matters that have no why do you worship matters that have no spirit in them? For they are the work of hands, and you carry them on your shoulders, and you have no help from them, but they are a great cause of shame to those who make them, and a misleading of the heart. To those who worship them, do not worship them. So again, it leads to a misleading of the heart. So people are being misled by celebrating these pagan holidays and think that they're doing it for the correct reason, and they're not. They have, been, they have been misled by their heart because, again, the heart is crooked above all, desperately sick, and who can know it? Okay, you simply cannot trust your heart. And then what a lot of believers need to do is take a page out of what Abraham says here in Jubilees chapter 12, verse 21, concerning your heart. This is what he says. And he said, shall I return to ur -Kastim? Or that I, that I may return to them who seek my face? Or am I to remain here in this place? Prosper the right path before you in the hands of your servant that he may fill it. And that I may not walk in the deceitfulness of my heart. O oh, my Elohim. Avraham understood this. He didn't want to be led, be led astray by the deceitfulness of his own heart. So he asked our Father Yahweh to lead his steps and prosper his way. So that there it is for anybody who says, oh, but I'm doing it. He knows my heart and why I'm doing it, celebrating these holidays. You can't trust that. It's absolutely wrong. Your heart is going to lead you astray. Period. Question is, and I'll end with this. Who will you serve with all of the, with all that's coming upon this earth? Okay. It doesn't appear that there might be much time left. We never know the day or the hour. So with all that said, my fellow brothers and sisters, anybody listening, you need to decide today who you are going to serve. It is my prayer, my prayer that you repent and cling to Yeshua, the son of Yahweh, that you repent and keep his commandments and walk in his ways. But don't let the stubbornness of your heart lead you to eternal destruction. So I'll leave you with this. Joshua, Yehoshua, chapter 24, verse 15. And if, and if it seems evil in your eyes to serve Yahweh, choose for yourself this day whom you are going to serve, whether the mighty ones which your ancestors served that are beyond the river or the mighty ones of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But I and my house, we serve Yahweh. Hallelujah. So me and my house, we serve Yahweh. And I pray that you all today, if you're, if you're celebrating these pagan holidays and you're not keeping his commandments, that you choose Yahweh and not Satan. So that's all that I have today, my fellow brothers and sisters. Please share this with everybody who is celebrating these pagan holidays and need to hear this message because it's important. And as always, may our Father Yahweh bless you all in Yeshua HaMashiach's name. Thank you all for joining in. And shalom.